everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Octio Studio, and I am here with the hashtag Artsy Second Sunday video hop. Uh, did this all last year, and now we're going to be doing it monthly all for 2022. And it is a collaboration of people providing free content, art content for you um, in 15-minute videos. And we do this as a premiere, so if you're here during the premiere, welcome. If not, uh, hello, and please go down below the video and hop through the rest of the links and give all those people who uh, made a video some love. Give, you know, give them a thumbs up, leave them a comment, subscribe to their channel, all those things. So we have themes, and uh, the themes this month, one of them was spring flowers. And usually when I think about spring flowers, I think about daffodils because when I was growing up, that was the first flower that and crocuses that came up. And on my birthday, which is in March, I was always given um, either a live plant of daffodils or some picked daffodils in a vase um, every single time. So it kind of came my became my flower. But here in Arizona, the first flower to show up, and it is a wild flower, um, when spring comes is the California poppy. And when I lived in California, uh, in the high desert, there was actually a poppy preserve. And you could just, you could, as you were driving up, you know, up north of LA in the, in the desert, in the Antelope Valley, there was just fields, of, like an orange field of poppies up on the hill that you could see. They're everywhere. Well, here in Arizona, we don't have them that prolifically, but we do have them along the sides of the road. And so they're one of the first things that you see when spring comes. And I'm always excited by that. Uh, they're bright yellow and they're, they're pretty and you just see them everywhere. So it's, it's cool. So I decided to make poppies and I wanted to make a sign for my studio door uh, using this little inexpensive wooden palette. Um, you know, a painter's palette. I think I got this at Walmart. I've had it for a long time. It's kind of dinged up and I didn't just want to paint it because of all the scratches and things that are in it. So I decided to do collage. So I grabbed out some scraps of painty papers in my orange box and my yellow box and I am just applying them um, torn all over this wooden palette, wrapping them around the edge. I'm using Liquitex, Liquitex matte gel medium to do this and a stiff brush. This is a, a distress collage brush that I like and um, making sure that, that the paper is well coated on the underside and on the, on the wood and then over the top I press it down with this stiff brush to get out any wrinkles and things. And just kind of alternating all these different papers that have varying shades of light yellow all the way to dark orange and maybe even a tiny bit of red and pink in there in different places. All kinds of papers, just little bits. And I save all my papers, all my extra scraps and things and, and sort them by color so that I can do something like this. Just cover the whole thing. And it doesn't matter what the back looks like. Um, if I cared, I could paint it black or something, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be up on my door. And then that room will be the door when the door shut. You can see that's my studio. I'm in there working. Uh, just never made one. So as you can see, as I was working, the light was uh, coming across my desk from the window. This is in the afternoon. This is what happens on my desk. And I don't have a blackout curtain or anything because... The way I have my overhead camera set up, it blocks the window. There's like a wire helping to hold it up so that it doesn't droop down onto my desk or fall over. So I never have any way to black out the sun. So I usually try to work early in the morning and then by afternoon, the sun cr starts creeping across the desk and it really will like almost obliterate what's on the desk. It's very strange. Um, and I really wasn't paying attention, so I didn't notice it was starting to do that until a little bit later. But um, I'm using a red pencil. This is a Stabilo All pencil. And drawing in some poppy shapes. They have kind of floppy triangular petals 
and then kind of like a little starbursty thing in the center that's holding it all together. And then um, they have long, pretty long stems that are kind of also floppy, but strong enough to hold them up. And then little, little pieces coming off the stems with little leaves on them. So I'm just drawing the poppy shapes, overlapping them a little bit, uh, drawing a couple of them that are kind of not yet open, just kind of partially open or turned to the side. Um, and then I'm going to do some reverse painting. Reverse painting is when you paint the background instead of painting the focal images. Sometimes I call this exclusion painting because to me you're excluding the background. You're, you know, painting out the background, which then makes the things that are in the foreground become shapes that become the focal part of the the composition. But this is just kind of, this isn't doesn't have a lot of composition to it. It's scattered. I was trying to make it look as if you were standing over a field of poppies and there was just all these poppies all over the place just all clumped together in random ways. I wasn't considering, um, you know, the rules of composition at all. Plus the shape of this thing is weird because it's a palette shape. And so I'm still trying to figure out, I'm gonna put it at kind of at an angle, uh, tilt it up a little bit. Am I gonna put it straight? I'm not really sure. I still haven't put it on the door. I need to get some of those command strip things that you can pull on and pull off to attach it to my door so it hasn't happened yet but what I have on my little piece of uh, paper palette there is some green some red and some white paint and eventually I add just a, a dab of black paint and I'm using the red to neutralize the green and make it a little bit more of a gray green uh, I don't want it to be a bright emerald green because I, I think that that the grayish tones in the background uh, go together better with the oranges and yellows. I just think it, it makes a better place for it to land. So just a tiny bit of red mixed into the green to just neutralize it a little bit. And then sometimes I'm adding some white in to make it a little bit lighter. Um, so that I can get color variation across the background. Then I'm also using some little stencils. They're just ATC stencils that I have on a ring. Um, I have a bunch of different rings of those because they come nine to a sheet um, from Stencil Girl Products. They're ATC mix-up stencils. But what I'm doing is I am just removing some of the paint uh, through those little shapes on the stencils with a baby wipe so that I get kind of a variegated background with some of the yellow and orange peeking through the green. I I want it to look like there's just a lot of poppies in the field, <laughs> you know? A lot of them are there. There's a lot of variation in color and little highlights and shadows. And I thought a good way to do that would be to remove some of the paint as I was going. I don't let it dry. I just uh, put the stencil over the top and wipe it down so that I can get some of it off before it's dry. I think it looks pretty cool. So then I mixed a little bit of black to make uh, a tone of this uh, color. So now it's kind of even more grayed out and it's a lot darker. And I started to paint leaves and then realized uh, at some point that I was pa painting the wrong kind of leaves so I had to change it a little bit. But basically what poppies have is a stem with like little pieces coming off of it. And then those little pieces have kind of small triangular, no, not triangular, um, three, three pointed uh, leaves on them. They kind of look like an alligator footprint or something. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. It's got a bottom and then three points and uh, they're coming off the stem on other little stems. Does that make sense? So they're coming around different sides and coming and making kind of a, a bushy underneath of the plant. So that's what I'm trying to duplicate here, painting in some stems in my in-betweens using this darker color, but I still have some of those lighter colors and yellows and things coming through underneath because of the paint removal that I did with the stencils, which makes it look very full. And I like that. That was my point was I was trying to get it to look 
kind of like a fabric or a napkin or something, an overall pattern without a whole heck of a lot of composition, basically. So then I took a little bit of the white paint and I'm kind of painting those starburst shapes in the center of the flowers. And this pencil that I used is water soluble, so it blends a little bit and I'm getting a little bit of a pink tinge uh, because it was a red pencil, but it worked fine. So then once that was all dry, I did give it a dry with the heat tool, but I cut that part out because my video is way too long for this hop. Um, I used a little bit of yellow, kind of a deep yellow gold color that is from a Pitt Artist brush pin from Fabric Castell. These have India ink in them, so they're permanent when dry. But on this sealed surface, because, you know, I've got all that matte medium sealing everything up, I have a little bit of time to blend them either with my finger or with a water brush, which you see me doing now with the sepia colored one. I'm going over those red lines, um, the petal shapes, and uh, kind of darkening them up and then blending a little bit and illustrating out the shapes of these poppies so that they stand out more. I like an illustration look rather than a painterly look most times. So I'm also adding kind of a shadow uh, on one side of the stems as well with the, the sepia toned brush marker and uh, adding a little bit of shadow around that starburst thing in the center so it stands out some from the background. And that is how I'm finishing this sign. Um, I will do a couple th other things to it. Uh, I'm going to add some highlights with some, some white ink. But the things that I will not show in the video but you see in the pictures is I did die cut some white cardstock letters with this uh, alphabet die set that I have. It's a, it's a strange one. It's from a long time ago. There used to be this pinchy thing and you put these little plates inside and you pinched down with this thing. I just use them in my regular die cut, my big shot machine now. They're just like thin dies. They've got this foamy stuff on them, but basically they're just thin dyes. So I cut out the letters out of white cardstock and shaded them with the same pen that I'm using now. I also put some crystal accents or glossy accents or whatever that stuff is, that dimensional clear uh, stuff over the top to make them look as if they're kind of made out of plastic. And then I also added an old beat up paintbrush that didn't have much other use at this point. Really junky brush and I, I painted that brush with white gesso all over it. Just covered it with white gesso and glued it on. So that's what I did to finish the sign and uh, those things are not in this video but I think they're self-explanatory. Cut out some letters, glue them on there, stick a brush on there with some gesso, call it good. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please remember to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment or question below if you have one. Subscribe if you haven't already. And of course you can join my uh, membership if you would like to not miss out on exclusive content. And um, of course, don't forget to go and hop through all the rest of the video links so that you can see everybody's awesome projects for the month of March, hashtag artsy second Sunday. You can also search that, harsh, that ha hashtag and find um, over a year's worth of content. So it's a fun little thing to do. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.